Now we take some media questions. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Elias, as you had mentioned at the start, back here. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you've been looking for an opportunity like this, co-main event, top-ranked guy. What does this mean to you, this fight? Hey, say that again one more time, sorry. So you've been looking for an opportunity like this for a long time against a ranked guy, co-main event. What does this mean to you? It means everything. Like I said, uh, five years now in the UFC. Um, you know, I've beaten some tough guys, I've fought in some tough guys, and I'll keep fighting some tough guys. Because in the top ten, after I beat Brunson, it's where I belong. Derek, Derek has called you a runner in the lead up to this fight. What do you make of that? Say that again one more time? He's called you a runner and he's been critical of your fighting style in the lead up to this. What do you make of all of that? You know, uh, what's it called? I would say, uh, you know, many people can criticize him. He's uh, been knocked out a couple times. I could say different things like that. But uh, let's just say I'm the more cerebral fighter. Uh, I'm the smarter person in there and I'll leave the smarter person out. But uh, I think Derek is the, a great opportunity because he almost needs to jump in. He needs to break that, that line between us. For just to kind of break it down some more, every fighter starts at 50-50, right? You have to almost approach their line in order to uh, get what you want, right? It's 50-50, you want it 60-40, you want it 70-30. He feels the need to break that line because it actually goes even beyond that. Like, I kind of, I wouldn't say stalk my opponents, but I kind of like psychoanalyze him in the capacity that in a previous life, in high school, university, he was a sprinter. But I'm gonna show him the difference between a sprint and a marathon. Elias, it's been a while since there's been a Canadian that competed for a title in the UFC. How close do you think you are to getting a title shot in the middleweight division? Well, I think, honestly, you never wanna look past anyone. I got a, a tough opponent that's gonna try and knock my block off. I'm gonna show him the difference between chess and checkers. And uh, basically, I think it's a great opportunity. Um, he's a staple in the top 10, uh, but you know, all good things come to an end. And I'm gonna give him his third loss in a row. Where are things at with your therapeutic use, uh, use exemption? I know that you've been working on that for a while. Um, well, it, it's a process, right? Like, I'm a huge believer in USADA, uh, the CCS, which is the Canadian Center for Ethics and Sport. That's the Canadian version of what we have. Uh, there's also the United States Anti-Doping Agency that because the UFC is a United States uh, American company, they partnered with them, but it's all under the, the umbrella of WADA, which is the World Anti-Doping Agency. So um, I've been working for the past nearly 20 months uh, for this process. Um, and unfortunately, it's an outdated mindset I'm fighting. It's uh, you know, a stigma more specifically in the States, um, because it's still classified as a, a schedule one drug, which means they, word, uh, which means that they look at it the same as heroin, right? Uh, part of that is, again, outdated mindset, racist mindset. It was uh, a laws that were built on the 1930s um, that basically, for those that don't know, um, it was essentially a way for a person named Randall William Hurst, uh, he was owner of the cotton, cotton mills, and he was owner of the newspaper. And he spread um, racist propaganda that basically said people of a different color were getting superhuman strength from cannabis. Because it was attached to, again, he owned all the hemp. He owned all the, owned all the, sorry, he owned all the cotton, and he was afraid of hemp. So again, it's a racist, outdated mindset that I'm determined to fight, not only for myself, but all other athletes moving forward. Beg your pardon? Um, again, because the UFC, they, have to, if they hired a, a third party tester. Again, I believe in USADA. I believe in anti-doping agency. I believe in clean sport. Um, and uh, you know, I'm very, one of the proudest moments in my five years uh, in the UFC was when the, UFC, when the UFC partnered with USADA because it was a big step forward. They, they have the highest protocol, the highest testing in any sport. That's a great thing and we should all, like, Applaud, we should all like, respect that. That's a big decision, right? And, they, and I'm very thankful for them. They support my, my own journey and it's an individual thing because that's what medicine is. It's an individual thing. I personally have bilateral neuropathic pain. It's essentially nerve damage of my upper extremities. And um, unfortunately the way it works is other first line medicines like opioids or you know, Vicodin is what I'm being told to take. And again, it's kind of backwards in the sense that they'll tell me 
they, they've already, um, in the process, they essentially uh, agreed that I have the condition that I have, bilateral neuropathic pain. But what they want me to do is exhaust all other medicine. So I gotta take Lyrica, I gotta take opioids, I gotta take painkillers to prove that this doesn't work with me. And it's not the only, it's not that it doesn't work for me, it's also the side effects. Let's talk about Lyrica, right? It's um, essentially, uh, what's it called, a painkiller. And taking that painkiller a couple weeks in, I um, noticed a side effect that I became bloated, right? And bloated isn't, obviously it's an uncomfortable thing, constipation, the pain that comes like through that, and now I gotta go into training. And I gotta get punched and kicked in the stomach while I'm constipated, while I have an upset stomach. And not only that, I have to, uh, what's it called, during that process, because of the bloating, I gain weight. As you may know, I am cutting weight. It's kind of a double paradox in that capacity, right? I am putting on weight, I have this competitive disadvantage that, again, not saying Derek Bruns is, any opponent, any opponent could have something like Vicodin in the system, the day of, and I would be the cheater. Again, it's a backwards mentality, a backwards mindset that I'm determined to fight. Cool. Um, thank you so much, uh, what's called truly appreciate it. It means the world for all of you guys to be in my corner. When I step in there, I'm not only fighting for myself, I'm fighting for my country, and I'm fighting for you. Boom. Cheers, guys. Boom. Boom.